Hello everybody, I am Just Lance and I would like to welcome you all back for another video. Anyways, this video, you might have figured out from the title, this video is in remembrance of my very first guide dog, Herbie. Um, we had to have Herbie humanely euthanized one year ago on August 6th of, nine, of 2019. So uh, today's the fourth right now, but this video is going to be posted on the 6th. Anyhow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shave and everything I use is going to go ahead and it's going to um, represent something or some part of Herbie. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to use. The razor is my electric blue, all aluminum, Razor Rock Hawk version 2 with the halo handle. The blade in it is a Feather Artist Club Professional or, or Feather Pro blade. And to be honest, I have no idea how many shaves I got on that one, um, but it's still going strong. And the reason why I thought the Hawk would be perfect was because as soon as Herbie's harness went on and we start working, he was in Hawk mode. He was looking for danger. He was looking for something that might hurt me if I ran into it. He was weaving me through crowds, around obstacles, on the sidewalk, and um, he never let me down. Um, Feather Pro, the reason why I say pro is because he was a professional guide dog. Um, it cost $50,000 for the school to get him there, for Guide Dogs for the Line to get him there, but he was definitely a pro which by the way fifty thousand dollars per dog is the average cost of training a guide um, if you want one trained well the brush i'm going to be using my 24 millimeter whip dog high mountain white in the tall amber handle high mountain white herbie was a yellow lab but he was so pale or such a pale yellow he looked white and tall amber handle he had um, amber eyes so that there signifies that the soap I'm gonna be using is Captain's Choice North when you get this well at least when I got it this and 48th parallel I believe um, which is kind of a Captain's Choices uh, take on Chella. This is a juniper berry soap. Um, it smells like the forest, smells like pine woods. And the reason why I chose it is because I got Herbie at Guide Dog for the Blind's Boring Oregon campus. And it was surrounded by pine trees, you know, just surrounded by the forest. And uh, this scent smells like a pine forest. So that's why I did went with the North. And Herbie was absolutely timeless. I'll never forget that guy. So we're lathering up in the timeless lather ball. I'll put a decent amount in there. So anyways, I'll go ahead, uh, whip up the lather off camera and um, we'll go ahead and get this shave going. All right, guys, I got the soap whipped up in the Timeless ball. Uh, didn't completely whip all of it up. There's still some in the bottom, but I'll go ahead and use that for my head shave. Let me wet the face. Quick update on the straight razor, the Wade and Butcher uh, Barber Notch razor. It's on its way. And I'll be going ahead and making a video showing you all that uh, showing you all that razor 
once it comes back and I'll share information about uh, the person that restored it. I absolutely love this High Mountain White brush. I ended up winning it um, in a giveaway. Um, Andrew Lyons, or Andrew Leon. On shaving in the lion's den. Yeah, Andrew Lyons. And um, haven't seen him on YouTube in a while, but he's a U.S. military. So I know he's been deployed to Afghanistan. So I don't know if he got deployed back to the Middle East and he had to stop making content or if he just got burnt out on it whatever I don't know um, I hope he just got burnt out on it and I hope wherever he is I hope he's still in great health and safe and I hope all of you are doing doing well which by the way how are you all doing um, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy in these uncertain times. Decent lather. Not uber, uber thick, but, you know, I'm, I never worry about having a Santa Claus beard. So, there we go. Rinse my hands. Anyhow, so I got Herbie, or we were teamed up. June 28th, 2009, up there in Oregon, which I'm just waiting on hearing back from the school to see if I'm going to be accepted for a second guy. First pass with the green. I got about four days growth. Anyways, when I first met him, was in the office of the head trainer up there and uh, he came in was brought in we were instructed don't call your guide or anything like that just let the guide come up to you so I sat there patiently waited for Herbie to do his thing and the uh, Trainer was telling me, oh, he's sniffing around. Oh, he's looking at you, Lance. Oh, his tail's gone. And Herbie came over and said hi, and we were best buds from that moment on. He was, well, Some may not understand this. When I say a lot of people won't, that dog was down there a soulmate to me. Pretty much was actually. And um, if you've never had a guide dog or a service dog of any kind, but we'll stick with guides. They do become your soulmate. Or at least pretty much do. The soap's doing great. And uh, the reason 
the bond is so strong, grows so strong between a guide dog and his, his or her handler. One moment. Reason why that bond becomes so strong is because the second you lay that harness on your dog and buckle it and strap him up, him or her up in that harness and pick that harness handle up and give that command to move forward well you are no longer trusting yourself for your safety you are trusting that guide or CNI dog but you're trusting that animal 100% with your life. And you have to, you absolutely have to trust that animal because, you know, they can pick up on your emotions and feelings and all that. And um, if you're not trusting that guide, make sure that you don't get hit by a car or step off a curb and fall down or something. You know, then it's going to be awkward as you and your guide are working. That dog saved my butt at least once from getting hit by a fire truck. Uh, I was giving him the command to go forward when it was our cycle on the intersection. And um, he wouldn't go. Gave him the forward command a second time he would not go. That moment, I noticed he was looking to the left, and that's when I heard at this very loud and busy intersection the sound of the fire engine. Coming through the intersection at high speed, and then probably when it was about halfway through the intersection, it hit its siren. So, if I would have been just white cane in it, more than likely, I would have been hit. So, that dog completely, totally saved my life that day. And oh boy, did he get lots of love and treats and got treats when we got home. I'll tell you what. Across the grove. And, uh, him and I ran together for a little over 10 years. If I was out of the room for more than a few minutes, he'd get up and go hunt for me. Even if he was laying down, he'd always stop what he was doing to go look for me. He never growled at anybody, he never bit at anybody. Well, he did growl twice at kids, but with good reason. girlfriend and I went for a walk while she was pregnant one night and um oh almost got myself and Herbie stopped he wouldn't go farther and he kept looking at these bushes and these are bushes we had been past hundreds of times and um uh, he wouldn't go and I knew 
that if he wasn't going, even with the forward command, something's up. Anyways, to the part about the ground of kids. Once was my son, the other was a special needs child we know named Zach. And the little boy Zach, special need kid, or special needs kid, loves dogs, absolutely loves dogs. Went ahead and big kid, probably about, oh, time he is probably 50, 55 pounds. And he walked up on Herbie while Herbie was sleeping and he dropped with his full weight before anybody could say anything. Dropped with his full weight on Herbie and Herbie kind of let out a little growl. Which I believe was more out of shock and maybe a little bit of like, hey dude, what you doing? Wasn't like one of those deep menacing growls, it was just like, Her, like get off me. And another time when my son was a toddler, walked over to see Herbie, and Herbie was just laying there, doing his thing. And my son, um, how can I put this nicely? My son stepped on my dog's fifth leg, let's put it that way, and he didn't bite or snap at my son. He just like, like kind of a, like a, like get off, get off. And um, so I grabbed my son up and I said, no, you got to be careful. And Herbie just kind of laid his head back down and went back to sleep. So uh, I didn't blame him or hold anything against him when he did those two growls. Because, you know, first time he was asleep and got startled awake by a big kid dropping on him. And the second time, my boy was standing on my boy's boy, so to speak, you know? So, that was the only two times ever, ever, that he even uttered any sound at anybody as far as, you know, uh, a growl or anything. So... Couldn't hold it against Herbie, because, you know, he don't have a, he didn't have a voice box where he could say, hey dude, get off me. So. Yeah, this, this Captain's Choice, good soap. Um, when I got mine, it was really, really soft. I mean, it was damn near a cream. It was before Captain's Choice started making creams. So, I took and did it with both the North and the 45th Parallel or 48th Parallel. I can't remember which. But, um... I let them set out with the lids off so some of the water and the soap could evaporate. And I let them set out for several days with the lids off. And um, it worked like a charm. Now it's more, I don't know, it's for a lot firmer. And this hog is just, it's doing well. These hawks are also great head shavers. These are his club razors. Well, both this and my general V1 are both excellent head shavers. As long as you ain't got like a week's growth on your noggin. The residual slickness ain't bad at all. I mean, Captain's Choice isn't my favorite soap brand, but it ain't bad at all. I like it. I like it a lot. Thank <laughs> you.
It also reminds me a lot of the place I grew up in. Because this is a small mountain town. And, um, but <laughs> we didn't have a stoplight where I grew up. We didn't have a stoplight anywhere in the entire valley until I was in high school back in the 80s. So yeah, small, small town. One of those kind of towns where you fart on one side of the lake, because it, you know, big lake, Isabella, Lake Isabella is the name of the town. Um, you could stand on one side of the lake, fart, and by the time you know, it got back to you, you know, you had had, you know, you had broke wind in church and, and diarrhea all over yourself, so to speak. Um, small towns like to gossip sometimes. At least <laughs> that town did. Neighbors knew each other, you know. If your neighbor wasn't wasn't home and they got a UPS package show up, you know, you made sure that you got it for them and then gave it to them when they got home and all that stuff. Anyways, going to go ahead and rinse off and um, be back for the alum. Okay, guys. See how the alum does. Not bad. A little bit of stinging. A little bit. Yeah, not bad. Here we go. Go ahead and set it over here on my little sponge so it can dry. But yeah, that, that's not a bad shade. Anyways, I'll see y'all back here for the post. Alright guys, my face is great, nice, smooth, pretty much BBS in most places. Hang on. My head, that's probably one of the best head shaves I've had in some time. Uh, and get it all perfectly down to the skin, but you know what? Um, it's good enough for me. Anyways, so, oh yeah, got a funny story about Herbie, guys. It was when I was training up in Oregon with him. Normally it's a 28 day program. By the way, T. Dickinson's Witch Hazel. Chris Bailey is the Thayer's guy. I'm the T. Dickinson's Witch Hazel guy. Um, Cause that's pretty much all I use. Uh, but anyways, we're up there in Boring, Oregon. We took our dogs out cause you relieve them on a schedule. Um, feed them and relieve them. Wake up in the morning, feed your dog uh, a cup and a half of food. Take them outside, let them do their business. Hang on, guys. Oh, let me grab my shave towel. I hung it back up. Why? I don't know. But uh, feed your dog, take them out, relieve them. And I always tried to do that before 9, 9.30 in the morning. Then take them back out at 11.30, 2.30, 30, feed your dog another half, cup and a half of food. At least for him, that was his measurement. Another cup and a half of food, take them out, relieve them. And then one more time at 8.30 at night. Well, anyways, um, we'll use the Sterling. No, that's the... Nivea. 
Oh, you're sterling. There you are. Sterling Aftershave Balm Arcadia. But, um... I was talking to a couple of the trainers. One of the trainers is, she was a, she was there and she was wearing this sundress, cause it was, it was summertime. So she was wearing her summertime sundress. Hang on, guys. Yeah, my son he must have had a, he start talking in his sleep. He's like his dad, a centralist. Um. So me and him, we both talk in our sleep. <laughs> my girlfriend one time uh, she said that I in the middle of my sleep I yelled out slap my ass and call me lefty why I don't know but that's what I said anyways um, but back to the story about Herbie anyways one of the trainers she had her sun summertime sundress on and we're talking and all of a sudden she's all now keep in mind everybody called all the female trainers called herbie herbie the love bug because he was a very very lovable dog anyways she's all like herbie no and i'm all what happened and she was all um he just stuck his head up my skirt and i molded over for a minute and i said you know the civilized man in me says, how rude, Herbie, personal space. But the caveman in me says, way to go, boy. <laughs> um, couldn't resist. But anyways, so yeah, that was Herbie. He was a loving, very loving, gentle, affectionate dog. When his harness was on, he was 100% all work, but when that harness was off, he was just a big old 70 plus pound galoot. Anyways, so, got the aftershave bomb. So let's go ahead and let's go with the uh, generic brute green. Um, by the way, Chris Bailey, I just went ahead and I saw that you uh, followed me on Instagram. Anybody wants to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram name is Lance Anderson 50 I can't remember if there's a space in there or not, but I don't have a profile picture on it yet, I don't believe. And um, I haven't done much on Instagram. I'm trying to figure out what to do because I want to change the name over to match my channel. And... Um, a little bit of burn and uh, you know start making it shave related for the most part and um but I just not quite sure yet exactly what I want to do on it um you know uh, why don't you guys down in the comments if you have any suggestions of things you would like to see on my Instagram, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, once I get it figured out, I'll incorporate those suggestions. Uh, you know, as long as ain't suggestions like eat a whole plate of ghost peppers, because that would absolutely kill me. I've got bad acid reflux. So spicy food challenges, probably not gonna happen. But, you know, any other thing, um, as long as I ain't gotta maim or dislocate any of my, you know, maim myself or dislocate any joints, uh, I'll give it some, I'll definitely give it some thought and consideration. But anyways, guys, that's the shave. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're still with me at this point, uh, thank you for sticking around. Um, likes, comments, always appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, I'd appreciate it if you did so. And if you do subscribe, kick that bell and click all for all notifications. Anyways, I'll y'all take it easy and I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye bye now.